Hey YouTubers, it's Charlie. This is gonna be my Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. episode five video, all about Simmons' Odyssey, her time on that foreign planet. We, we still don't know where it is. I'm thinking less and less that it might be the Thor version of hell, like H-E-L, hell. But there is a very important reason that they spent so much time filming on that planet that we could talk about in spoilers. So just careful if you haven't seen the episode yet. Let's get going. Starting off with Simmons' initial time on the planet, just like WTF, how did I get here? What the hell is going on? She's got the phone and she's able to spend almost as much time as humans can go without food or water before she has to move on. She has to go find a source of water, which she does to her great relief. So it's kind of like Lawrence of Arabia on another planet. I, I just say that because she's British. Wouldn't she love to have a TARDIS now? She's on the blue planet. Where's the blue box? She did find the bad man. I'm, I'm sure all the pieces are there. We could, we could put that together. But it's just the beginning in a series of challenges that Simmons has to overcome in order to survive. If you're a big fan of the Odyssey, this is like a great allegory for that story. She finds water, she defeats intelligent plant, eats said plant. And as we saw later in the episode, the planet isn't completely dead. There used to be life on it. There's, there's fungus, there's other sources of food. On the number four though, Simmons versus Crazy Pants Mystery Person. She gets captured, thrown into prison, so we know that there are other people on the planet. And she was running from something the last time we saw her on the planet, so, so we know something was chasing her. We found out it was the monster, so to speak. I guess we can just call it the monster for now, but it's probably another inhuman. But the reveal is, is that it's another person and he speaks English. So eventually she finds out that it's a NASA astronaut that in 2001 went through the monolith on the orders of NASA. It was like a NASA manned mission to learn more about the other planet. We can blame the Bush administration for greenlighting that. But he explains some of the rules of the planet to Simmons. This is a terrible place. She learns about the no-fly zone. She learns about the nameless danger that will take over her mind if she's not careful. Will is kind of like this Robinson Crusoe character. You know, he has the skill to survive. He isn't completely crazy, but he is definitely a little bit nutters. We've pretty much given up on being rescued. Maybe this is your new home. And of course, Simmons, who's only been there for a little while, is just like, screw this planet, this blows. I'm going home. Speaking of which, on to number three. Meet Crazy Pants Will, probably not a bad character, but also someone we know has been holding back information, so we can't trust him 100%. Now, right now, Will just seems like a character device to help develop Simmons' character. I don't know if he's gonna turn into something bigger. She wouldn't go back to rescue him if he wasn't, so I, I do think he's joining the cast somewhat, at least for the first half of the season. But he might be like a snack for the narrative to eat at a later date. Like, we're just gonna tuck you over away here and we're gonna eat you later. Some big inhuman's gonna come and destroy you. The way Will explains it, especially the danger zone, is that people are being sacrificed to this mystery alien here. We know it's humanoid and its powers affect the weather on the planet. And it may or may not be responsible for the once fertile planet turning into this just barren rock of nothingness. So on to my number two WTF moment. Mystery inhuman alien here, very powerful, Probably not as evil as we think it is. The whole setup just feels way too obvious for me. Like this thing is completely dangerous. It will completely mess with your mind. Don't go near it. Don't learn anything about it. Usually the twist in situations like that, when a character says that someone is super dangerous, they end up being just misunderstood. They're not dangerous at all. If Simmons was able to use the stars to find a way to get back home, to figure out the location and the timing of the portals, she can definitely learn what this thing is. But I don't think that it's Lash. I think that it's something that's also trapped on this planet. I know I talked about the idea that Andrew might be Lash, but wouldn't it be cool too if Lash were some, some other character and he were tied to this phenomenon, this other inhuman on this planet, and he was trying to get rid of inhumans so that they wouldn't turn into this crazy inhuman that destroyed this planet. Now, of course, we don't know that he actually destroyed the planet. We just know that Will thinks that he did. And finally, on my number one WTF moment, Simmons, after escaping the planet, convinces Fitz to help her rescue Will. That end credit scene, when, when the sun comes up, was just meant to be this like this stark contrast, just, just to show that Will wasn't a hallucination, he's an actual character. That was the thing that he missed most about Earth. So that reminds him about Simmons, so he's hitting like an all-time low. The real question though is, is when they go back to rescue him, will that other alien come back through the portal with them somehow? I feel like they wouldn't tease this mystery powerful character without allowing him to come into our world at some point. And the only way to do that is through those portals. But we're still no closer to finding out what that planet is. But now that we know we can go back and forth a little bit easier, they'll probably figure it out. That'll probably be Simmons and Fitz's arc, figuring out what's going on with this mystery planet and this mystery figure here, this mystery inhuman. Just remember that he and Lash are two different characters, but they might be connected. There might be, there might be some mystery connection that we don't know about yet. 
Let me know though, what was your favorite moment in this episode? And what do you think about them devoting an entire episode just to Simmons' arc? I feel like it was good payoff, like for, for her time during the break, you know, all the time we didn't see her. But really, like there, there weren't that many Easter eggs in the episode. Like it wasn't very marvel -y. It was really just like a normal sci-fi story. There weren't that many identifiable comic book moments other than the fact that they're facing an inhuman here that they don't know anything about. I'm totally cool with the show doing stuff like this. There have been a couple really good Simmons episodes. It's kind of like that episode in season two where it showed her being part of Hydra. She was supposed to infiltrate Hydra and pretend like she was one of their lab techs. So this was kind of like an even bigger version of that. Just a solo Simmons story, great character work. She can be one of the more interesting characters when they give her good stories. And I feel like last year when they started to push into Inhumans, she got a little bit racist. Like she got very xenophobic about the Inhumans. So I feel like this is a nice twist on that. I did see a little confusion about the sex scene. I saw some people wondering if Simmons is like pre pregnant with some, some baby now. No, I don't think that she's pregnant. I think that their, their relationship on that other planet was just meant to be a, like a touching moment in time. So when he comes back, naturally it's going to complicate the little love triangle they have going on with Fitz. But I, I don't think it's going to be that big of a thing. They just meant to show that Simmons and this other human bonded in their isolation. They just tried to provide each other with some comfort. It was, it was just like a one-off thing. They're not going to move in together or anything whenever he comes back. But next week looks like it's going to be a good May episode. Hopefully we'll find out what's going on with Andrew because he's mostly tied to her storylines. Again, there are a number of possibilities. I definitely don't think that he's dead. Otherwise, Junior Von Strucker wouldn't be crapping his pants right here. I think that either he is an inhuman himself and manifested powers and saved himself or another inhuman swooped in and helped him out. Or he could be like Coulson and just be a normal badass on his own. If you remember, one of the earliest Marvel short films they ever did, like way back in phase one, was Coulson in the convenience store kicking the shit out of that robber. Just him being badass. It was the funniest thing ever. They said when they filmed that, they actually, it was so short, you know, it wasn't supposed to be this big deal. They weren't supposed to spend a lot of money. But they did such a big effect sequence, like the big fight scene with the, the way the camera spun around, that they blew their budget. So when they got to the next short film that they did, it was just Coulson and Sitwell sitting in that diner talking to each other. They're like, we can't spend any money on this. We blew the budget on the last one. And as far as I know, the last short film that Marvel did was the Hail to the King one for Iron Man 3, the one with, with the Ten Rings and the Mandarin, the real Mandarin. So be sure to subscribe to get next week's video. Uh, what's going to happen tonight is there's a new episode of Arrow. I'm trying to catch up with Supergirl which I think is going to be an interesting show this season. I haven't seen anything besides the first episode, and, and pilots tend to be a little bit weird compared to the rest of the series. They've already, they've already filmed several episodes, and they've got a bunch of comic book characters. I'm most interested to learn about Maxwell Lord on the show. There have been versions of him in the past, but I, I think the CBS version, this Supergirl version, is going to be the most powerful. Oh, and I should also say, Captain America Civil War trailer, the latest intel is that it's going to drop in December near Star Wars The Force Awakens. Of course, Daisy's going to use its biggest film to promote its other biggest film. So while you guys wait for all that stuff to post, you can click here for all my Captain America Civil War videos, and you can click here for the flash from last night. Thank you so much for watching, everybody. Let's high five. I'll see you guys tonight.